have here a classic physics demonstration. It's, it's a ring launcher. And, and all I did is I took a plug from the wall, I took the two leads, I connected one end to, this, to the red wire, and then I wrapped the red wire up and down and back, it was a pain in the butt, and around and around and around, and then attach it to the other end of this wire and back into the wall. So what happens when I turn on the electricity is that, well, obviously electricity will flow, and the only resistance is the resistance of these wires. So it's little resistance, and therefore you get a large amount of current. And this current is flowing in a circle. And when current flows in a circle, you get a magnetic field. And when you have a, and the magnetic field will be changing because it's AC current coming from the wall. It switches directions 60 times a second, 60 hertz. And therefore, you have this changing magnetic field, a changing magnetic field through a, a surface area creates a flux, which therefore creates a counter current. That is a current that flows in a direction, so it creates an opposing magnetic field. Well, let's see what happens when I turn on the electricity. Launches the ring, hence the name ring launch. Now, what I used to tell my students, and it's completely wrong, is that well, you've got the magnetic field generated by this guy, you have the opposing magnetic field from the ring, they oppose each other, boom, it flings up. You need a force to create motion. And if you recall, we know what the force is in this situation. It's equal to the current times the length of the wire. Uh, and it's, uh, I'll leave out the cross product, but when they're perpendicular, the magnitude is simply these guys multiplied together. The, the true formula looks like this, or I should say, yeah. so that's the full formula, I should say, we have a cross formula. But our situation, clearly it's perpendicular. Now, the thing though, is if you use the Lorentz course and the right hand rule for the direction, what you get is, you get a magnet field going up, current is going around the ring, um, I guess in this case, if it's increasing upward, the current would flow like this. So then you have current flowing, magnetic field upward, the force is inward on this side, but then as I go around the ring to the other side, the force is also inward. In fact, it's always inward. There is no force upward. What's making it launch? Well, let me show you on the board what's making it launch, and then I'll show you a little demonstration to prove it to you. So here's our coil of wire. This is the red wire. And the magnetic field, it doesn't just go straight up. It bends outward. It comes out. And because of that fact, we get a vector like this for the B field, which has a horizontal component and a vertical component. And it's because of this horizontal component that you actually get an upward force. Because if we, if we look at this, we have the current going into the board, horizontal component, for example, horizontal component this way, and therefore we get a force in the up and down direction. The way I've drawn it here, it's down, but don't forget it's switching 60 times a second, so the next instance of it. That's what causes the ring to launch. And before we do it again, let me prove it to you. So, so what I have here is just a coil of wire attached to a light bulb. So the light bulb tells you when there's a magnetic field going through the middle. And you can see, oh, there's definitely a vertical component. There's also a horizontal component. It's not just going straight up, the magnetic field generated from these wires. And that's why it launches the ring. One more thing to show you, I have another ring here. It's not launching. What's going on? Ah, I've cut it. So electricity can't flow. Electricity can't flow. There is no force. There is no launch.